Hello everyone and welcome to tonight's lecture, Grandmaster's Choice. So, in this lecture I will be going over some games that I have played recently and I hope all of you will learn a lot from it. And I will be teaching all of you how to outplay your opponent in the middle game. So, welcome to everyone both here in the classroom and online. So the first game I wanted to look at is this game I played recently against Darius Swierts with the white pieces. And this was played in the Summer Chess Classic here in St. Louis. Now for those of you who don't know, St. Louis also hosts these uh, classics, which are for players rated over 2600 or maybe a little bit below there. And it's really great that those tournaments take place as it's great uh, for me as I get to practice or while well, I, I get to play against at least nine opponents of uh, similar strength. All right, so in this game against Darius, I opened the game up with the move d4, my bread and butter these days. And kind of as I expected, he responded with the move knight of six, c4, and e6. So with these moves, he's aiming to play the, the Nims Indian defense, which arises after knight c3 and bishop b4. But I went for something else. I played the move g3, the start of the Catalan. Now Darius played d5, I played bishop g2. And here he surprised me a little bit with the move bishop to e7. Darius is also taken on c4, he's played bishop b4 check. He's played this in the past as well, but I wasn't necessarily prepared, uh, expecting this for this game. After bishop e7, I played knight of three, kingside castles. And here, by far and large, white's main move is the move kingside castles. And what black does here is they take on c4, and after queen c2, white is going to get the pawn back, but in the process, Black is going to try to activate this light squared bishop because in the Catalan very often the advantage white has is the fact that this bishop on g2 is more active than this bishop on c8. So what black does here is they go a6 and in case I take they go b5 followed by bishop b7 giving black a fine game and if I go a4 to stop b5 then black goes bishop to d7 and in case I take then bishop c6 and now the bishop is active over here. But I played a slightly different move. I played the move knight c3 and I think before this game Darius didn't really expect this one and it's a move that is slightly unpleasant to face if you're unprepared. Now black's main move here is taken on c4 and then white goes knight e5 aiming to get the pawn back and black can play c5 here there's knight c6, uh, queen e6 is also an option but the thing is black has to know what they're doing here. Black has to play accurately for equality and that's generally not a very pleasant uh, place to, to be in, you know, if you, if you have to find a bunch of accurate moves only to reach an equal position. So it's understandable that Darius, given the fact that he might not have, might not have checked his files before this game, did not want to go into this. He played the move c6, solidifying this pawn on d5, but, you know, now white has, the, has more space in the center. So I castled, and here he played the move a5. Now, you might be wondering, what is he trying to do with this move? He's just gaining space on the queen side for now. But also maybe later on he wants to go b6 and bishop, um, bishop a6, bring the bishop in that way, and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Here black also could have taken on c4, but again I go knight e5, and black doesn't have a good way to hang on to this pawn. Let's say they go b5, I can take over here, and white wins a pawn, as the pawn on b5 is also hanging. So generally here white is considered to, to be slightly better, again, because this bishop on c8, which is quite passive. So Darius played a5. Now what white often wants to do here is get in the e4 push. So I played this move b3 to just defend the pawn on c4. Right, he played b6 and now I played the move knight to d2. With this move I'm aiming to go for a quick e4 push, which again opens up my bishop on the long diagonal. And here Darius quickly played the move b5, but I wonder if perhaps there's a chance he mixed up something in his uh, preparation, because I remember that b5 was a move after knight e2 and here b5. That is that black gambits a pawn, but after takes, takes, and I take here, black goes queen b6. Attacking my knight, the pawn on d4. Let's say I go knight c3, they can, they can now take here. And in case of a4, black gets pretty good play with bishop a6, attacking the knight, knight c6, and, uh, and, and so forth. So I play b3. With that, I want to bring my bishop into the game. So b6. And the reason why I didn't play, let's say, bishop b2 here is that I think black can now go, let's say, bishop a6, attacking the pawn, and after knight e2, perhaps now a quick b5, putting more pressure. And what black wants to do is uh, bring this bishop to life, 
Again, now this bishop on e6 is not at all worse than this bishop on g2. So I wanted to play e4 quickly. So that's why I played knight d2. Played b5. All right, and so uh, here I really don't think I have a lot of choice. I think I just have to take the pawn over here, because if I go e4 now, I think here black is uh, in pretty fine shape to just take on c4 and take on d4. I think black is just um, doing fine here as the knight on c3 is also under attack. So I accepted a pawn sacrifice, I took, and now he played queen b6. So he's attacking my knight. And um, yeah, question to everyone here in the classroom and in the audience online. How do we all think we should deal with this move queen b6? What should we do? Our knight's under attack. Chess is all about decision making, so let me know. What, what do you think is the right decision here? Uh, no worries, no worries. We're all here to learn. You know, we have someone in the chat, Caleb, who's like 700 on chess.com, but he's found the right move, so don't be shy. What do you think is the right move? Pawn a4. Pawn a4 is definitely a move. It looks, it's the first, uh, it's very intuitive, right? You defend the knight because this knight is defending the pawn over here. But again, black goes bishop a6, and then your knight is hanging again. And after black takes here, I think black is doing pretty fine. Even if white gets the bishop pair here, the bishop on g2 isn't too active. The pawn on b3 is a little bit weak. And black gets a pretty active position with a knight coming to c6. So k4 we see doesn't work out in the right way. So then what else can we do? Well, the knight is hanging, right? Mm -hmm. We see that protecting it is possible. Black is fine over there, right? And we're playing it with the white pieces. So we want to try to get an advantage out of the opening. With black, often you're happy to equalize. With white, you're hoping for an advantage. So if a4 is not the move, what else can be a move here? Don't be shy. Yeah, exactly, knight c3. Excellent, the best move. Very good. Okay, so black takes this pawn on d4. Now the material is even. Our knight on c3 is hanging. So how should we deal with this? What looks like a very convenient way to deal with the threat on the knight? This should be two. Very good. We defend the knight and develop another piece. Oh, yeah, awesome. Now, with the move bishop b2, we also create some threats. Let's say black continues their development with bishop b7. Bishop b7 is not a good move, but can anyone tell me why? What does white do here? See that with the move bishop b2, we not only develop our bishop and protect the knight, we also create this battery. So knight e4 is possible, you attack the queen, but the queen moves, and yes, you can take over here and damage black's pawn structure, and white's probably better here, but it, it's nothing too terrible for black. But white's, white has something crushing here, but you're looking in the right direction. You see that you can move the knight out of the way, and attack the queens. And then you, think, then you gotta think like, hey, do I potentially have any targets with that knight? This pawn over here? Yeah. All right, so why not? So let's calculate. So knight takes d5, what do you think black's gonna do? Where? Um, D5. Yep. So let's see. So knight takes D5, queen takes D5. What does white do there? Also question to everyone in the chat. Knight takes D5, queen takes D5. What does it move there? No. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's also this bishop over here. We can take the queen. Excellent. Very good. So it's very easy to just get tunnel vision on this side of the board, on the 9 and c3 and bishop v2, but we get a look at the full board, and we also have this bishop over here. So indeed here, knight takes d5 is just crushing. We attack the queen, 
and the queen cannot take, as we take the queen, and in case the queen takes here, at the very least, you know, we can take on over here with check, the king has to move over, and then we win a piece. Let's take this bishop over here. All right, so Darius realized he had to move the queen, and I think around here, he the move he played was fine, but a big mistake he made was that he went from one hour and 23 minutes on the clock to 19 minutes, and that came to haunt him later on. So the queen has to move, and he played the move queen before, a fine move. All right, so again, he's stepping out of this, um, this diagonal. So what do we think we should do here? We have a slight lead in development, right, with white. We have both knights developed, both bishops. How do we continue from here? How do we use our pieces to their full potential? How can you open up the bishop? Moving the on C3. Okay, so you open up the diagonal, like let's say you go, I don't know, like knight a4, right? Your bishop is active, but it's not necessarily doing anything. The knight is still protected. So black can play, say bishop a6, and they're doing pretty fine. Rook c1 is fine as well, bringing another piece into the game, but black again plays something like this, and they're doing quite okay. Now here's the thing, for the moment the position the position is opened up, right? Some pawns in the center are gone. But this bishop on g2 is a little bit blocked in right now with a pawn on d5, right? And you especially take advantage of a lead in development if the position opens up even more. So how can we try to break open the position here? On e4. Exactly, we go e4, excellent move. Take this pawn over here, and we want to open up the diagonal for this bishop over here. And also, you know, let's say some trades happen over here. Then this bishop also opens up, right? And we can go for moves like queen g4, threatening checkmate over here. Okay, so Darius played bishop uh, to a6, and here I played the move a3. Kicking his queen back, play queen b6, and now, what do we think we should do here? So, move bishop a6, black has attacked our rook on f1, right? What do we think we should do? Someone in the chat was asking, was a3 accurate? I think rook e1 was slightly more accurate, but the reason I did not go for rook e1 is because of the move bishop to c5. With, and with this move, black is planning to meet pawn takes d5 with bishop takes f2, takes in queen e4. I thought this was okay for him, but I think after bishop c5, if I'm not mistaken, I think here queen f3 was good for me. Yes, and I thought he has knight bd7, I think, but after something like, maybe it was e5. The position is quite bad for, for black. So, something like this is what I, what I should have done. Anyway, but I played a3, queen b6. All right, so what do we do here? And hey, not every move needs to win the brilliancy prize. You're just playing a game of chess. Again, game of chess is all about decision making. What do you think? What is it? Exactly, we just go rookie on. A rook is hanging. There are ideas of taking over here, but I think black's just fine. Black can take the rook over here. And um, also, you know, they're attacking our bishop, so stuff like this doesn't ever work out. So we're gonna have to recapture, let's say, with the, the queen. And then black, I think, is just fine after, let's say, takes takes everything and, I don't know, knight c6 or rook a7. It's not that easy for white to prove the compensation here. <coughs> All right, so I played rook e1, and now black played d4, attacking our knight on c3. So what should we do here? Mm 
What does everyone think we should do? Now, in chess, you very often want to gain the initiative. You very often want to gain the initiative. With move d4, he's pushing me around. He's attacking my knight, and I have to respond to that. So it's nice to come up with a counterpunch that he has to respond to, and then I can uh, keep making the moves that, that I want to make and continue putting pressure on him. So knight a4, excellent. We go here and attack the queen. So we play queen a7 to keep hanging on to this pawn on d4. All right, and now how do we continue? How do we continue our pressure here? We don't want to let black off the hook. Knight f3. Knight f3 is possible to increase the pressure on the pawn on d4. But I think here black plays, let me think. I think here black plays, maybe d3 is all right. I don't know if they can go knight c6, although it feels like they can probably take here. Yeah, it seems like black's doing fine, but I guess maybe maybe d3. But, but knight f3 is a, is a fine move. I think black, black's doing fine for the moment after d3. All right, so any other ideas to increase the pressure on black? Yeah, no, Caleb, Caleb is on fire. He's, he's getting better. He's getting better, yeah. Exactly, the move is e5. Great job, uh, Caleb and, and Ben. We take this rook over here. We also take the knight. So black only has one move. Black only has one move. Let's also practice our defense. What should black play here? To hang on for the moment. How does black not lose material? Because, again, your knight's on attack and the rook. So how can you hit two birds with one stone and address both threats? Excellent, 95, only move. All right, so 95. And here I came up with a, the, here I came with a move that was perhaps a little bit surprising. But I think it worked out really well. So what does, everything, what does everyone think we should do here? We've got a pretty nice position. Our pieces are active. Black is not fully developed yet. This knight is not in the game yet. This rook, therefore, is not in the game. So if we can, if we can continue the pressure here, it might be tough for, for black to, to play this position. What does everyone think we should do here? Again, chess is all about decision making. And just like in life, with every decision you make, there's always going to be pros and cons, you know? Now, I see a lot of people that want to go in knight c4, but I feel like knight c4, I can just play, let's say, knight c6. Defend the spawn over here. And it's not that clear how we're going to follow up over here. And overall, Black's got a position that is fundamentally quite all right. They've got this pass pawn over here. Maybe they can bring the rook into the game. You know, if Black gets the time, they might be doing okay here. Queen g4 also has been suggested to put pressure over here, but Black goes knight c6 and hangs on to the pawn. Mm-hmm. Um, F4 has been suggested in the chat, but it weakens this diagonal, it weakens the E3 square, so it isn't really the move. Someone actually has suggested the right idea in the chat. Which is the move bishop takes D5? We give the bishop for the knight. Now, this might look very strange. Very often this bishop on G2 is white... Um, I don't know what, I don't know how to call it, but like white's pride in the Catalan. Also, if you give this bishop, you weaken the light squares around your king, right? So you gotta, gotta find the right uh, follow-up. But I decided that this was all right. 
Because after pawn takes, it's very difficult for black to ever get, let's say, a queen and a bishop on these light squares, right? So we've given up our bishop. Black now has the double isolated pawns in the center. How do we follow up here? How do we take advantage of those weaknesses in the center? Now here's the thing, especially with double pawns, especially the most forward pawn is the weak one. Right? It's very difficult to get to the pawn on d5, right? But the pawn on d4 is pretty easy to attack. So how do we do that? Knight of three, excellent. Okay, so knight of three, and we attack the pawn on d4. Now perhaps what Dario should have done here is play a move like knight c6, but I just take here, white's up a pretty clean pawn, and this position is not a lot of fun for black. But he played d3, and now we also see why I gave up my bishop for the knight on d5. I've given up this bishop, but this bishop over here has the potential to become pretty strong on this diagonal, right? Now it's open, and if I push with this e-pawn, it's already looking at the g7 pawn. Okay, so how do we continue from here? Black plays d3, hanging on to the pawn. And again, if black gets the time to develop with a move like knight c6, they're doing quite all right. So what do we do here? So e6 has been suggested by some people in the chat, but black goes to knight c6. They don't have to respond to this, to take stakes. And I'd say this trade has worked out in black's favor. As now the pawn on f2 is under pressure, and maybe white's just, maybe white's even worse here already. Rook a8 is coming, and I don't see a good way to, to hang on to uh, the knight of 3 mm -hmm. So bishop d4, also a possibility to attack the queen. But I think the problem is that black plays, let me think, I think they just move the queen. Maybe they just play something like queen b7. Yeah, I think black might just be fine after let's say queen b7. You can go knight b6. But here maybe black goes, let's say rook a7. And in case you take, they can take, and here, the weak dark squares definitely are a factor after, let's say, bishop b7. Right here, the, bishop and the, the queen and bishop come to life, and that's exactly what I wanted to avoid. Like, right here, they're still super far away from ever doing any damage to my king. But in the position we saw right here, they are doing damage on the long diagonal, and that's not what we want. So, as some people have suggested in the chat, a great move is knight d4. We just stop black from playing knight c6. This knight is headed to f5, putting pressure on the bishop, also putting pressure on this pawn over here. If e6 comes, the knight and bishop are cooperating perfectly. Also, the queen can always come to g4. So that's what I was aiming for. But really just the fact that this knight cannot come into the game. Let's say black goes knight d7. White has a way here to win the game on the spot. White, what does white do here? White just has a knockout punch here. Why is knight d7 not a good move? Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Knight c6, excellent. Tagging the queen and we pick up the bishop. All right, so knight d7 is not possible, which is a pretty big problem for black. So black played g6. All right, now here there are multiple good moves. White's got a pretty dominant position. Again, like the black pieces can't really move. So I played queen g4, bringing my queen into the attack as well. Okay, now black played queen to b7. So with queen b7, they want to go knight c6. They really want to get this knight into the game. If black gets another move here, they're not doing too bad. 
Again, knight d7 is not a move because of knight d6. But so queen b7, what do we do now with white? Exact. Which pawn? Yep, we go e6, excellent. We go e6, we wanna open up this diagonal for a bishop and do some damage to the black king. Now, rook ac1 has been suggested in the chat, but rook ac1 is not a good move. What does black play here? They go d2, yep, and they have a fork, so that's not the right move. Okay, so I played e6, opening up this diagonal, and it's really tough for black to, uh, to survive here, especially because Darius was getting very long time. Now, he played the move knight to c6, but knight c6 actually loses the game by force. So, does it, so let's, let's calculate here a little bit, and let's, find a, let's try to find a win here for Y. There are multiple good moves. But what do we all think? Let, let's calculate. Everyone here in the chat and in person. Now, I'll, I'll help you guys out a little bit. It would be great to take advantage of this long diagonal, right? It would be great to take advantage of the long diagonal. And I'll give you guys another hint. Very often, black can close the long diagonal with f6. Like, let's say something like knight f5. Looks pretty tempting. But I think here black still goes f6, white is certainly better, but I don't see a knockout punch just yet. All right, so what do we think? And it's not a one move, it's not a one move um, solution. It is, wait, let's see, one, two, three. It's actually a combination of four moves, but you have to put all of the different themes together. So what do we all think? Pawn takes f7. Pawn takes f7 is a good start. Take here, black recaptures with the rook. Now, the one thing though is that if you take an f7, you should already have some follow-up in mind because this improves the placement of the rook. Black is eyeing this pawn on f2. Um, so what do we do now? Queen e6 is possible, but it, it doesn't actually create a threat. Right, so after queen e6, black can play, um, I mean the knight is hanging, but black can, I don't know, take over here, maybe play d2. Black, black's actually doing very fine, I mean they can also take over here. Black's very much in the game. So you want to create threats. Queen e6, when you attack the knight, black can just take. And you want to get to that king somehow, right? C7 has been suggested, but black just recaptures. So that's not the way to go. I'll help you guys out a little bit. We see that putting the queen on e6 is not very effective, right? But if we could somehow get the queen on this diagonal, oh wait, sorry, on the long diagonal together with the bishop, that could be pretty deadly. Because queen h8 would be made. So getting the queen on the long diagonal would be great. So how do we get there? Okay, we can take the knight, black recaptures. Let's go queen e4, right? We threaten mate. Does black still have a defense here? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly, bishop to f6, very good. So black goes bishop f6 and blocks the diagonal. And black, again, is doing pretty fine here. Now, a lot of people in the chat have suggested rook takes e7, followed by queen, queen d4. This is possible, but queen h8, it's not made. King can still move up. So I'm not a big fan of this. I think here, black can maybe just play, let's say, d2. 
I mean, you can check, but the king moves up. You can check, but the king goes here or here. And it's a pretty unclear position. Black is turning rookie one in the meantime. So I'm not, not a big fan of this one. So we see what we want to do, right? We want to put that queen on the, on the long diagonal, but we want to make sure that black does not have a defense. We want to make sure that black does not have bishop f6. So what can we do here to make sure that black does not have to move bishop f6? People in the chat have found it. Indeed, here we have the move rook to e6. Excellent. Attacking the queen. And now when our queen moves here, he cannot stop this. And you know, when I was calculating, it was like a rook e6. He's no way of stopping this. Like, can I go here or here? And um, yeah. Let's say, by the way, black plays bishop to c8. What do we do here with white? What do we do here with white? Yeah, here we just go queen to d4, because we turn checkmate anyway. Don't take the queen, and there's nothing black can do. All right, so rook e6, and yeah, black's in big trouble. Black played queen to c2, and what do we do now? The nice thing is everything per coordinates perfectly here for white. Someone in the chat suggested queen e4, but it hangs the queen. It's a little bit unfortunate. So what is the move here for white? Also, by the way, black is threatening this pawn on f2. Exactly, so we go queen e4, excellent. And it works out beautifully for white. We defend the pawn on f2, we turn checkmate it over here. There's no bishop f6, so black just resigned. The black's best move is queen takes f2, which tells you how bad black's position is. Because black just goes down a rook in an endgame and this is completely lost. So. Yeah, we see a pretty nice game here uh, and how we can use our slide lead in development to never give black a chance to get into, uh, into the game. Now, Darius's big mistake was that he never really accepted a slightly worse position. And let's say this position right here, he should have at some point just taken on e4. Now, white's going to be a bit better here after, let's say, um, takes, takes, because I've got these, uh, these bishops that are pretty active. But, you know, it isn't too terrible for, for black. But, again, the mistake that he made is that he kept playing to, to principled with moves like d4. And now, because here if black gets some time with like knight c6 or e5, they're doing pretty okay. But they don't get that time. All right. So, and for, for those of you wondering in the chat, this was my game against Darius Swirts from the Summer Chess Classic approximately uh, a month ago. All right. So now let's have a look at another game. This was played in the Spring Classic. And I was playing with the black pieces. Now, I just came from a win with the white pieces the day before against Sam Savian. So I was on 50%. And um, yeah, so I, I got, uh, you know, better in, in the tournament. But okay, so he, my opponent played the move e4. I played e5. Knight of 3, knight c6. And he played bishop b5, the real low pass. Okay, so I played a6, bishop a4. And I played the move knight of 6, attack, uh, def developing my knight. And he played the move d3. Now, I think with the move d3, he just wanted to make it very easy for himself. Because uh, with the move d3, you know, you don't have to uh, reckon with the open Spanish. And you're already in this d3 system, so to speak. Like, black can go b5 here, they can go d6. But there's not a lot of systems you have to know. But okay, I played bishop c5. No question to everyone. With the move d3, white is defending this pawn over here, right? So let's say white takes on c6 and takes on e5. What does black play here? It's not a good idea for white to take this pawn, but how do we punish it? What does black play here? 
Mm -hmm. Good job, Dread. Yep. Indeed, here Black plays the move Queen to d4, turning checkmate on f2 and attacking the knight on e5. Okay, so my opponent just castled. Now this is a threat, as the f2 pawn is protected, it's no longer turning checkmate. So I play b5, bishop b3, and d6, you know, solidifying my center. My opponent played a4, threatening to take, as my rook on a8 is undefended. So I play rook b8. Okay, so he took, took, he played c3. And here I, did, here I had a decision to make. I can, I can castle here, but then there's a the move bishop g5 that I have to reckon with. I can also go h6 to make sure that that is not a move. But then he has the move d4, and eventually I decided to castle, but quite quickly I regretted it a little bit, as he played bishop g5 quite quickly, pinning my knight on f6. So I played h6, bishop g5, and after some thought I played the move g5. And I thought, okay, well, I take his bishop, he has to move the bishop back, and then I'll think what I'll do, like, will I go, let's say, bishop g4, maybe king g7, it feels like black should be doing fine here. My king side has been weakened a little bit, but I've got a pretty active position. This bishop on g3 is also a little bit uh, blocked. But instantly, he played the move knight takes g5. And I'm like, oh, well, great. Like, apparently I run into some preparation. All right, so okay. I took, he takes. And here, I played the move king g7. So play king g7 with the idea to protect the knight on f6. All right, because now he goes queen f3 to put more pressure on it. So I had to play this move at some point. Because the thing is, if I get the time to, let's say, go like knight e7 to g6, I'm doing pretty fine. So that's why he increases the pressure. Now, white has two pawns here for the knight. But again, this pin is pretty unpleasant. And it's not that easy for me to move. Because let's say I play someone like bishop e6. I would love for white to take. As then, you know, my rook defends knight. And this alleviates a lot of the pressure. But after bishop e6, white plays Let's say bishop d5, attacking my knight, which is not that easy to deal with. I don't have knight e7. Like, let's say I take, he recaptures, my knight again is hanging. And I think this might already be quite bad after, let's say, knight e2 and knight e4. So, so white's got real compensation here for the, for the piece. Okay, so I play rook h8. I play rook h8, bring my rook into the game. You play bishop d5, attacking my knight. Now, how does everyone think is what is the best way to deal with the threat on our knight? What is the best way to deal with the threat on our knight? Yep, indeed, we just go bishop d7, just to protect the knight. I mean, there's no other good way to protect it. Like, let's say you go rook b6 after b4, our bishop is trapped. We cannot move the knight, so just have to go bishop d7. Mm -hmm. So white played d4, attacking the bishop. All right, now what, what should we do now? Now this bishop is under attack. And some of these moves, like bishop d7, are not that difficult, right? But I'm trying to make you guys play the game here as black. Like your bishop is under attack, what do you do? Indeed, we just have to move the bishop back. We just go bishop b6, the only square for the bishop. All right, now here my opponent played the move knight to a3. So the move knight a3, he's putting pressure on this pawn over here. But what I would also love to do is go like knight c2, the e3, to bring the knight over there. And once the knight lands on e3, I can never really take, as white recaptures with the f pawn, and this opens up the file for the rook, and my knight on f6 comes under even more pressure. And also with the knight on e3, Let's make a couple of moves. I, I play queen e7, knight c2. Let's say I play, I don't know, rook bg8, right? It's a move I considered. He goes knight e3, and now I have to be extremely careful, because if I go, let's say, I don't know, his, his threat is to take here and go knight f5 check. 
so my bishop no longer controls that square. So with the knight coming to e3, things get pretty scary. And I didn't like this position at all. I felt like, you know, I'm up a piece, but I'm under a lot of pressure. It's very difficult for me to make a move. But here I found a way to change the momentum of the game. The move I played, I, I don't know if it's necessarily the best move. I think it was one of the best moves actually, but I really liked it from a practical point of view. Because again, it, it changed the momentum of the game completely. So what can black do here? We're gonna have to be a little bit creative here. Black has a move here to, again, change the, change the pace of the game, to change the momentum. Rook h6 has been suggested in the chat. It's actually uh, a move that, that's quite decent. White can take, but here at least you're out of the pin. But I think even here it's not that pleasant after, let's say, knight 3 and the knight is coming to f5. I think white definitely keeps an initiative here. You're going to have to be a little bit creative here to find the move that I came up with. Came up with. But here g4 is not really a move as white can take here mm -hmm. and then take the bishop. We lose the, the piece. Mm -hmm. Maybe move the knight to e1? Uh, move this knight? No, the other one. Uh, knight d8. Yeah, knight d8 is possible, but white goes knight e3 anyway. And like now we can go c6, but the bishop moves back here. And now, I mean, there's also moves like rook a6 yeah, with pressure. Right, bishop e6, but uh, white doesn't have to take. And also this is not a threat, as there's knight f5. So, and maybe here white can take, or I don't know if white's so eager to take, but again, all of this isn't very, it's not very, it's not a very pleasant position for, for black, like there's rook a6, and it still remains very difficult to move. Right, I mean, if I take there's here, you don't want to take here, because there's this. So it's very difficult to move. So the move I came up with, was knight takes d5. Now I'm sacking my queen, but keep in mind that I've already won a piece, right? So here I actually have three minor pieces for the queen. I've got two bishops and a knight, but white also has two pawns, right? So white has the material advantage because the queen is considered to be worth nine points and every minor piece is considered to be worth three. So the the queen and the well the in term the the queen the queen and the minor pieces even out but he's got these two extra pawns right but at least here you know my pieces can move again all right because I've got these uh, these open files that I can now try to use to my advantage so he played the move d4 which I think was a was a fine move and um, so I the deep to answer your question the computer actually. Um, thought this was completely fine. It was actually one of the best moves. Now what do we do here after d4? How do we continue bringing our pieces into the game? How do, you, how do we all think we should deal with this d4 push? I guess you mean knight g6? And then you, 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 you are going to use that space for, you, for moving on the, the other knight. Knight g6 is a, is a, is a fine idea with the, move that it, with the idea that in case it goes d5, now go knight c7. That's definitely something I considered, but I didn't like knight g6 because the move knight e3. And it's a little bit unpleasant that I can go here or here. And if I take, I think it goes knight d5. And he now has the move queen f6. So I didn't quite like this. So the move that I played is the move rook h6. As we see, we're not at all forced to take over here. Um, and here he played check. All right, so how do we all think we should deal with this check? Also, by the way, white could have played d5 here, but I thought that here I'm doing quite okay. So let's say knight d8, I can go f6, knight f7. This knight can go here, this other rook can swing in. And again, at least practically, it's, it's a lot more fun to play with black. 
Yeah, so we gave this check. The check looks weird. Some people have pointed out in the chat. Yeah, like a lot of people, okay, this looks weird. But we'll see the idea soon. Yeah, so here, indeed, we just block with the rook. Now, he played queen e3, defending the pawn. Okay, so how do we continue bringing more pieces into the game? How do we continue bringing more pieces into the game? And indeed, the idea, we'll see very shortly, is to go f4, to try to open up that file for his rook. So what do we do here with black? Mm -hmm. Rook g8 uh, is possible, yeah. But I would still have to move my king out of the way. Rook g8 definitely uh, a good move. I played rook h8. So bring the rook into the game right away. Because the thing is also, let's say you go here, I guess I'll have to move the king here. Because if I go here, then there's this check. Um, but yeah, it's def definitely possible to go here. But I played rook h8. And here he played f4, aiming to open up on the king side. So how do we all think we should deal with this move? Because, you know, he wants to open up the file. f5 is also annoying, attacking a rook and bringing ideas of uh, f6 into the position. So what do we all think we should do? Uh, rook h3. Yeah, we're going to rook h3 and attack the queen, but I think here white just... Yeah, rook h3 actually makes a lot of sense. Let me think. I think here white plays... Maybe it was just g3 or... This move was definitely possible, but I wasn't too impressed with it. Um, maybe it's just g3. g3. F5 certainly a possibility as well. Bishop H3 is a move, but I think white just goes rook F2. Mm -hmm. So I took on D4. I took on D4 because I want to make sure that this bishop remains active over here, right? Yeah, you were feeling the diagonal. Exactly. Yeah, this, the spin on the diagonal is pretty unpleasant for him because you know I also have pressure on these files, so he's got to be a little bit uh, careful. All right. So he took with the knight, which was quite a critical mistake. I thought actually during the game that it made made sense. But he should have taken with uh, the pawn. That's what he should have done. Okay, so he takes with the knight. Okay, now what, what do we do here? What is the way to go with black? I'll help you. I'll help uh, everyone out. We'll, we'll take here first. Okay, now. So here you just have to think, like, okay, white wants to go f5. Attack a rook and go f6, which would create a deadly fork on our king and knight. So what do we do here? You have to move the knight and try to attack the pawn in the center because he's finished. And then you add pressure there. Okay, we can go knight c6, but white defensive with rook 81. And here, still a 5 is coming. Just not that easy to deal with. c6 is possible. But indeed, better is the move f5, stopping f5 altogether. Okay, five great move. And here, white played rook a6. And with the move, this is the move white was banking on. White's idea is to take here, give up the rook for the bishop, but after I take, the pressure here is gone, right? So let's say I play a move like, I don't know, um, I'm just gonna make, um, let's say I do this, he wants to take, and then go d5. The bishop is gone, there's no more any pressure here. Here I've got a lot of pieces for the queen. I've got two rooks, a knight and a bishop. But white again has a lot of pawns. This pawn is weak, my king is a little bit exposed, queen e4 is coming, my pieces don't really coordinate here. And white's at least doing fine here, white's probably just better. But after rook a6, I found a great way to make sure that my pieces do come to life. So what do we do here with black? Got to, again, if white gets the time to take on b6 and go d5, they're doing quite fine. They're probably better. Yeah, maybe you have to push the pawn in the center and try to defend with the rook. Right, d5 is possible, but um, here maybe white just 
takes, and then there's queen e5 check after. It's not too. Not too good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Again, it's a little bit, it's a little bit passive. We want to make sure that our pieces come to life. And here, I, I found a, a little tactical sequence. Sorry, what? No, I didn't take the pawn. Mm -hmm. So someone has suggested the right move in the chat. I play bishop c6. With this move, I want to take here. And if I take here, then all of a sudden, all of my pieces coordinate perfectly. Now, he can't go d5 as the pawn is pinned, right? I mean, e5 hangs made. Um, so like, if I take here, then there's also like knight e5. Now, what happens in case white takes here? And perhaps this is what he missed. What do we do here? Exactly, we take here with the bishop. Now we threaten to take here, like let's say Musarok, this is check yeah. and mate. He cannot do that. And so then he has to play, let's say, rook f2. Well, or, or, or just take I here. Take yeah, we can just take. And here we have two rooks, a knight and uh, we have a rook, a knight, and a bishop for the queen, which is more than enough. And our pieces coordinate perfectly. That is the big difference. And we managed to capture a very important pawn. So here, he realized he was in trouble. So he played rook f3, I took, now he played rook g3, and I played knight d5, putting my knight in the middle. Mm -hmm. All right, so here it's all working together uh, very nicely for, for black. Okay, so he played queen e2, and now I brought my rook into the game with rook to h4, attacking this pawn over here, which is not that easy to protect. He can play g3, but then I think I can just go rook h3, followed by here and here. So if white plays slowly, if white plays passively, they're going to lose the game slowly. Because the thing is, I can always attack his weaknesses. And uh, let's say he would give up his queen for the, the, the bishop, for the rook and the knight. I should be winning in the endgame with my two bishops against the rook. All right, so he sacked, he sacked over here and brought his queen into the game. Like maybe knight takes was better. But okay, I took the pawn, went queen c1, I brought my rook back, played queen c6, and I played rook to d8 to defend the pawn on d6. So he played h3, played knight of 6 to attack the queen, and now he took over here. So how do we uh, continue? Our rook is under attack, where should we go with the rook? We want to activate the rook, right? Of the, of the rook is hanging. Oh, sorry. So we want to bring the rook in now. Mm -hmm. So rook a8, definitely possible. I played rook to c8. Because I want to go rook to c2. And here, you know, black is definitely better. Black is pushing for the win. White maybe had to take on d6. And it's, it's pretty unpleasant, but there's still a chance to hold. But he played g4 which loses on the spot. I'll, I'll help you guys out a little bit. I took over here. But what does black play in this position? Yeah, you have to play, you have to play the rook and control. You, 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 you don't want to take the, the pawn, you know? So then you're going to block with the rook. So you attack the queen. Rook c6 is possible, but he plays, let's say, queen... Let me think. Queen d8 or something. That's not quite the move. The move actually is knight takes g4. Take this pawn, and now this king is all of a sudden trapped. My bishop covers these squares, my knight covers these squares. So rook c1 would be made. He takes, and now I go king h5. And all of a sudden, he doesn't have a single check on my king. This is not available, this is not available, and this is not available. So he has to go king of one, all right? Now, how do we keep closing in the escape squares around the king? King is really trapped over here, right? Rook to the seven. We can go rook c2, but white goes, let's say, queen e7, taking our bishop, threatening mate. 
and it's not that easy for a uh, Y to deal with. So indeed, the move for black is the move bishop f3, taking away the escape squares for the white king. Okay, so he played king e1, and now I play rook to c2. And I want to give this check over here, which is quite deadly. Um, rook c2 check. And uh, yeah, this king is, because uh, if he goes here, he's, uh, he's going to get checkmated. And if he goes here, then I should always have a discovery. So I played queen e7. Played rookie to check, take, take, take. And now, what do we do here? We have this end game where we have the king and the knight and one pawn. You know, we only have to keep one pawn on the, on the board, but we have to make sure that the king doesn't somehow step up. So how do we keep white under control? Well, Deeps was saying, uh, he said like, I need like an hour to calculate this game. Well, that's why <laughs> this was a classical game. So I, I did have the time. So indeed we go knight f6, stopping d5, king e3, and now I played king g4, bringing my king in. He goes d5, question, do we take this pawn, yes or no? And if y can somehow get that king in, they're making a draw, they escape. Do we take the pawn, yes or no? What do we think in the chat? Yeah, we can go here, you but he goes it, here. Take it, take it, go, go. No, it's a, it's a goal. Yeah, and a goal. yeah. So we don't take the pawn. Indeed, we keep shouldering the king. We go king f5. Let's see why it goes king d4. What do we do here? This is. You have to avoid to the, to the king come, and then you have to use the knight. So how do we do that? Yeah, so you, you move the knight. Two. Yeah, the, yeah, so I think both are fine. I wasn't 100% sure about 94 because there's still d6. And then, yeah, no, wait, in case I take, there's king d5. No, wait, wait, here there's knight c4. Knight c4, by the way, and knight e3, and he wins. Mm -hmm. uh, I have here, but there's, no, no, this is actually a draw because he goes f5 and f6. Uh -huh. And my king keeps getting distracted. So indeed, the only winning move is knight to d7 because d6, I'm just in time. And if he doesn't do that, and let's say he sits, then here the winning plan is pretty straightforward. I just bring my king around, and eventually I pick up everything. So instead of all that, he played king d3, I took the pawn. Now when knight e4, takes stakes, king c5, king e5, and he resigned. Or what? Because if he goes here, I go king e4. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I managed to win this game with a black piece. It's a very important win. And that also helped me on the way to winning the Spring Chess Classic this year. But yeah, everyone did great, both here in the classroom and in the chat. I hope all of you, get, all of you guys enjoy watching. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. I will be uh, doing another lecture in the evening. And so I hope to see all of you guys for that. The world's most unpredictable chess is back. Chess 9LX makes its return to the chess capital of America, St. Louis, Missouri. Beginning September 7th, 10 players will compete for a $150,000 prize fund. With 960 different variations, even the best in the world don't know what's coming. Featuring Gary Kasparov, Hikaru Nakamura, and returning champion Fabiano Caruana, this is an event you won't want to miss. Catch all the action on the St. Louis Chess Club YouTube and Twitch channels.